Welcome back to today's build. I'll be your guide to this wonderful game we all love. Let's get started. Today's deck is hotter than the Nine Hells. Her name is Carlock, and this is the Infernal Engine. Carlock wants us to attack, so this has to be a creature deck. Extra combats do the most with large volumes of creatures with combat-related abilities, high power, and evasion. Since Carlock herself doesn't have to attack to get the trigger, we'll try to play out these creatures before she comes down and make the most of that extra combat the turn we play her. Our choice of background complements our commander by giving all our creatures an attack trigger and supplying more creatures that have native evasion. This ability is doing the most when we can reliably connect to different opponents and take advantage of the many payoffs that exist for fairies and dragons. Together, our commanders want us to play in lots of early non-token flyers with relevant effects and be on the lookout for any fairy, dragon, or flyer payoffs. Like a lot of background commanders, you all really slept on this one, so the data isn't as good as it might otherwise be. But Triton Shore Stalker, Slitherblade, and Gadoo Lurker still don't belong here. It'd be one thing if we didn't have the entire history of Blue Evasion to draw upon, but we do, and we can do so much better. Blasphemous Act is one of the worst cards you could put in this deck. Board wipes hurt the players who committed to the board the most, and that's us. If you're playing board wipes in a creature deck at all, those wipes need to be one-sided. We have so many other good swaps for this. These cards are trying to mimic the explosive power of some of our other tribal payoffs, but Impact Tremors and Witty Roastmaster lack all the explosive power, while Ganax definitely brings the heat, but nothing we can weaponize at a time we need it. Ganax is only ever coming down in the back half of the game, and mana isn't what we need at that point, cards are. We'll make these swaps to find that card draw alongside some more explosive finishers. So what do our lands look like? This deck runs a really high land count, most of which are basics. The reason we have so many lands and less ramp is because our commanders are doing the most when we get Karlak on the board with up to three flyers at play. If you do some quick math, we only have enough room in our timeline to play three flyers and a background by turn four if we set aside any other plays we could make. Since we also need to be able to get to five lands, it's really important to be able to start with three lands in our opener, so that's what we're looking for. So what's our timeline? On turn 1, we'll play Merkle, Wind Robber, Siren, Storm Tabor, and Soul Ring as our early flyers and mana accelerate. Turn 2, we can play Looter Ilkor, as you are Ward Wing Familiar, and Fairy Mastermind for flyers with effects relevant to our game plan. Turns 3 and 4 together represent our chance to play our background. I'd prefer to play a flyer on turn 3 and the black ground on turn 4, but if your hand won't allow for that, then play the background turn 3 and a flyer turn 4. Turn 5 we'll play Carlock and swing out, creating up to 6 fairy dragons a turn and begin our assault. Then we'll buy time to find our closers with Baral's expertise, filter out, and spell setter sprite. Next we'll use Furcrag, Curiosity Crafter, and Reconnaissance Mission to refill our hand and dig for our closers, and cross the finish line with Shadow Puppeteers, Dragon Tempest, or Shared Animosity. This deck isn't trying to win before turn 6, and it's explosive and reliable enough to play with the 7 to 8 range. What it's really lacking though is interaction. These colors typically interact best on the stack, but this strategy interacts best on the field. There are a few cards that do this really well, but they're typically pricier than I would like, so I've left them as honorable mentions in the credits if you have the budget to spend on them. A very special thanks to all my amazing patrons. 
When I started this channel, I wanted to talk about deck building decisions with my videos, but in practice what ends up happening is that I talk for 30 minutes about all the nuance of a deck, which is longer than I'm comfortable with posting to YouTube. Here, patrons can request priority deck techs, access extended discussions on their favorite decks, in-depth guides on complex game actions, and more. So if you enjoy this content, consider becoming a patron today. One of the things my patrons have made possible is a special series of deck techs that I'm really excited to show off to you guys. When I finally get them all uploaded, I'll be giving away a special collection of altars and tokens that I've made, corresponding to each deck on the channel. For example, for the Merkle Lord of Bones deck, the prize is a set of double-faced altars of the most prominent cards in the deck, whose backsides are set in the constellation frame with updated text to show that they're acting as enchantments now. For every thousand views on each video, I'll increase the prize pool for that deck. All you have to do to be able to win is be subscribed to the channel. Consider supporting the channel today. If you like this video, here are some of the decks I'm working on next, so if you like what you see, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any, and check out the playlist in the top left for more. Thanks for watching!